Today on Unity Motorsports Garage, we're going to find out if the free simple mods that you see on YouTube for Crown Vicks actually work. So as you can see here, this is the 4.6 two valve that comes in the Crown Vix. The mods that we're going to be discussing today are pretty simple. The air box. A lot of people will want to put a cold air induction kit on this to try to make it flow more. Don't do that. Do not do that. If you put an exposed element filter in place of this box, while it may show a gain on the chassis dyno, in real world, all it's going to be doing is digesting hot air from that engine. Bad idea. So what we're going to do, we're going to remove the air box here, assembly, and there is a silencer that goes from the air box to behind the headlight. We're going to remove that open it up more so that it can actually breathe and we're going to quantify our results with this little thing right here known as a draggy it's going to be good stuff uh going to do the air box and see what that awesome muffler delete is worth as well yeah this is going to be fun so in order for us to quantify the results of the simple mods we need to do an established baseline to find out where we're at and I want to do these tests in the same day so that we can compare the draggy results and come up with an obvious conclusion so let's get ready to make our first test hit object here is not the spin so I'm just going to baby it there we go I got it come on let's get it man this thing is slow so on that particular run it ran 10.87 at 65.2 miles per hour which is actually better than the baseline that I made when I drove it with uh, David which it was a lot hotter and you have to take that into consideration the important thing here is not the ET it is actually the mile per hour because that is the indication of horsepower and that's what we're searching for today horsepower free horsepower all right first step to removing this is going to be unplugging the mass airflow meter simple tools here i mean literally 7 16 socket aka 11 millimeter extension screwdriver no big deal i am going to take the tube off of it you wouldn't necessarily have to do that if you didn't want to but it will make my life easier. Pop the lid of this off. And yeah, we're going to talk about this mass airflow meter here in a minute. Get that out of the way. Now this car, believe it or not, did come with a K&N filter. Uh, this is one mod that I would definitely recommend. Part number is 33-2101. Really good bang for the buck. That was a good surprise. Now we have the air box. Three bolts or three nuts. Nothing to it. thing came out expect the unexpected 
the object of today's video. One of them anyways. When talking about mass airflow meters on Fords of this particular air, you will notice an AFH number 70. That 70 refers to the diameter of the mass airflow meter itself. So this is a 70 millimeter. Um, you can go to the junkyards and find on some Lincolns and Mustang GTs, they came with 80 millimeter mass airflow meters because what happens is the more power you make, you will max this small 70 millimeter mass air meter out. This car also comes equipped with a 65 millimeter throttle body. And the first restriction, you're trying to suck air through that small hole through a 70 millimeter mass air meter and a 65 millimeter uh, throttle body. This has got to go. So as you can see, I got that cut out. I didn't even use the Sawzall, and you can see the pattern that I cut into the air box. It's pretty cool. Um, this is old school stuff. I did this 25 years ago on my old Mustang. So um, most people like quantifying things on chassis dynos, and that's fine. And you need to really watch the video to the end. And I'm going to show you how you can get dyno numbers from what we're doing with the draggy. So make sure you watch this to the end. Uh, basically, I'm gonna put this back together, take another drive and see what it does. With the box installed, you can actually see the line of sight that we have to draw through as far as getting air coming from behind the headlight. And it's still being shielded from all of this hot air right here. So it'll be interesting to see how it works. Looking at it put back together, you'd never even know. And one of the cool things is when you go to the drag strip, if you want to pull the headlight out, you can actually get a more ram air effect at the drag strip by pulling that headlight out. That's just one of those old school Fox body tricks from back in the day. So my first driving impressions of doing this mod, which only took 10 minutes tops. I'm serious, folks. And that was taking it off and putting it back on everything. Um, for the first time in this Crown Vic's history, it sounds like a real V8 car instead of a taxi cab. Has a deep uh, air intake sound. I mean, sounds really good. The thing about it is, I can actually tell a difference in the seat of the pants. Now, is that my mind, or will the draggy tell us something different? But that's what we're going to find out. When you're doing this type of testing, even though I'm doing this on the same day, keeping the variables constant is almost impossible. Take, for instance, the density altitude from when I made the first run about an hour and a half ago to now has went up almost a thousand feet and um, that will have a dramatic impact on the results that we're getting ready to see but if we can manage to keep the same mile per hour it tells me that we gained so I don't know what it's going to do and I don't know what it's going to be worth but we're getting ready to find out I want to reset this thing leaving it in drive for all of these tests because I do not have a shift light or shift tack or anything so let's see what it does quarter mile it felt stronger no whether oh, it slowed down But the mile per hour went up. Huh. Half mile. So, not bad. 
so it went up to 65 point uh, three four miles per hour which is up and like i said we're in a lot different weather than we were this morning when we made the first runs pretty good stuff so when you do this mod don't expect a ton of power if i'm on the guessing side of things i'm going to guess probably three to five horsepower tops um when you see these ads of cold air kits adding up to 20 horsepower it's not true folks i hate to break it to you it might be true with the hood open and with air blowing on the filter in a perfect world with dry ice on it i don't know but uh, when i do the calculations at the end of the video you'll get a better picture of what this mod was worth as far as power one thing i will talk about is maybe down the road upgrading this tube because this 90 degree elbow right here is probably it is a restriction and then this corrugation right here that causes disruption of airflow but that's still pretty good bang for the buck for 10 minutes work what we got one 4.6 tech tip i want to give you back when i had my shop many years ago i discovered this and i've only seen one video on youtube test this and prove out what i figured out years ago because i never dyno tested it i just noticed that i lost a ton of power when i put this intake on but i can tell by the look of the runners themselves that this is a doorman intake which is a replacement style intake for the 4.6 Ford Mustang in Crown Vic engines. Now, these engines are notorious about cracking the intake manifold in the crossover at the front of the uh, intake itself. And back in the day, when these Dormans first come out, it seemed like a really good deal because you did not have to use factory intake gaskets the gaskets were inserted into the manifold themselves and it was a it seemed like a better design once i installed the intake onto the car and took it for a drive i could tell that something was wrong it felt like it lost a ton of power it just choked up above 4500 rpms and um yeah it was not the same but the customer did not want to spend the extra money needed to get the Ford Racing PI intake manifold, which at that time was only $250 to $260 uh, from Summit Racing or anywhere else. You got to remember this is 2007, 2008, 2009 range. But uh, yeah, check this little video clip out, and I highly suggest you go watch their entire video. So with the Dorman intake manifold, the car made 222.4 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and 266.2 pound-feet of torque at 3,500 RPM. After that, I went ahead and swapped the intake manifold to the Ford original manifold. And then with the Ford intake manifold, the car made 241 horsepower at 4,900 RPM and 274 pound-feet of torque at 4,300 RPM. So if we take a closer look at the results between the two intake manifolds, peak gains were solid at 19 horsepower and 8 pound-feet. More importantly, the curb gains past 3,500 RPM were 25 plus horsepower and 23 plus pound-feet of torque. The increase in horsepower and torque is because of the runner design and the larger chamber volume on the Ford original intake. So you have to admit, that was a pretty cool video picking up over 20 horsepower from the factory intake manifold being put back on. So the next thing we're gonna test man is we're going to cut right here on both sides i'm going to leave the mufflers and the cat back over the axle in place because if i make a test and test it without the weight here these mufflers are heavy very heavy I think it would negate what I'm trying to do. So what I'm going to do is cut it right here. And it's not going to stay like this very long because 
I'm going to have this stuff replaced. Plus, it'll make it sound like a real Mustang. <laughs> well, at least it sounds like a Mustang GT now from back in the day. You know, you would think with it having no mufflers at all that it would be extremely loud. No. It pretty much sounds like a Mustang with an off-road H-pipe or X-pipe with mufflers. You have to remember this car has four catalytic converters and that tones down the exhaust a ton. So we're getting ready to make our grand finale run to see what this thing will do. Should be quite interesting, I would think. going to reset it all right didn't spin Here's the interesting result, y'all. Let's see here. 1087 at 65.04 miles per hour. The density altitude is almost identical as last time, so this goes to show you it didn't really do anything. In fact, it actually slowed down. So, get back. We're going to wind it up wrap all this up and see what our conclusion is for today as you can see for our baseline it was a little over 73 degrees and a density altitude of 1900 feet once you take this information you can go to wallace racing calculators and come up with rear wheel horsepower as you can see we started with 193.83 Moving on, after we did the homemade cold air kit, things got better. But the temperature went up, density altitude was higher, and therefore went 65 miles an hour, 0.34, for 198.01 horsepower. Good game. Now time for the muffler delete. This one I thought was going to be a winner, but that wasn't the case. After this run, you can see that the mile per hour actually went down to 65.04, dropping our power output to 195.2 miles per hour. So after getting back and breaking down the results, you can actually see what we come up with. Uh, the Crown Vic is an awesome platform. You've got to remember that I have dyno tested hundreds of these 4.6 cars probably when i had my shop in they typically dyno when they were bone stock 195 to 205 with an automatic a little bit higher with a manual um cheap upgrades well in this case free does gets me to the point what did we learn well the cold air kit that we made worked and it also proved to me that the factory mufflers for the power that this engine is making at this point is not necessarily a major restriction so that's just where it's at i can't wait to move on to part two which is going to be cheap upgrades for the crown vic 4.6 because check this out so what you're looking at here is a 373 ring and pinion and track lock for the crown vic i got to give a huge shout out to cj lambert for hooking me up 75 bucks folks 75 bucks crown vic's going to go fast cheap well sort of this pretty much wraps this video up i hope you got something from it and hope you like it because i did i had fun doing it takes me back to my roots when i was young so until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I will catch you later.